Hello folks and friends and welcome to the factory. In today's video, I am making a doll of Kira, a character from the 1982 classic dark fantasy movie, The Dark Crystal. This is a commission work ordered by Mirania Lavendel Art on Instagram, who is an amazing person. I highly suggest you go look at her art, she's extremely creative and talented. For this doll, I am using a Monster High Venus McFly trap, and I picked her because of her face sculpt. Though she's going to need some modifications to become Kira, and the first being getting those health like ears. Here, I am sculpting them with some Apoxy Sculpt, which is a two part modeling compound that is both strong and air dry. I am using a silicone tool to shape them, as well as a little bit of water to smooth things out. I got a comment on my Angel Dust video inquiring about safety measures regarding the use of this clay. Well, technically you can work with it with bare hands, but it is recommended you wear gloves when mixing it. I can't work with gloves with for the life of me, so this is how I deal with it. After I'm done and the ears are fully cured, which takes about 24 hours, I take fine grit sandpaper and I remove the glossy layer on top of the doll's body. This will help the paint grip on better because I am going to change her skin tone. Then I make sure I clean her well of dust and any other impurities that could have sneak on there with some rubbing alcohol and she's set to go. I use a mix of watered down acrylics for that and I have a video on the process if you want to see it in details. I will leave the link down below. I do apologize for the jump. I'm really sure I filmed a rewrote process but I can't find the footage. I must have deleted it by accident. Either way, I'm already on the face up, starting like usual with contouring using my soft pastels and various makeup brushes. This time, I've already placed the head back on the body. I did that because I wanted to make sure I was not going to damage her ears by putting it back on. It's also why I masked the body, to make sure nothing happens to it while I'm working on the face. As for contouring goes, it's a bit like makeup. I like using a mix of warm and cool brown shades, and I will go in to contour the forehead, cut the jaw, the cheekbones, and then I have some shadows around the eyes and on the nose. First layer is just is very just the rough foundation of things, and I do it more or less the same way regardless of the look I'm going for ultimately. This does not happen often, but I was pretty confident then, so I started to shape the eyebrows early. I find that doing brows can be really difficult sometimes, and it's pretty important. I feel like nailing the shape can elevate my face up to the gods, so I usually try to take my time. I use powder first and then I needed the razor to go and shape everything just to make it as perfect as I can. You also want these to be related to each other. Twins if you can, sister is good, but I won't settle for cousins. I am sadly, well, I'm a perfectionist. And I was told I sound pretty confident in my video, though, to be honest with you all, I'm still trying to gauge my abilities and perfect my own style. I'm far from being the best, and I love doing what I do, so I'm more about sharing my passion than trying to impress you all. I just get so much obsessed by what I love sometimes, it's like losing all sense of what is around me for a moment. I just love making these dolls so much, like life is passion, and passion is life, and this is how and who I am, well, a little bit, inside of me. Pastels are such a fun step. Here, I am trying to contour her face to make those under eye bags appear more, and I want to shape the blush to run across her face over the bridge of her nose. It's really about making her look cute and youthful. This doesn't look like much so far, but she's taking shape, and this is usually where I start getting very excited to see how she's slowly coming alive. And of course, I start hiding the white in early, because that pigment will need some buildup. Those face-ups are done in layers, with a spray of sealant between each. All the materials are listed in the description box below. I usually do two, sometimes three layers of only pastels before bringing in the watercolor pencils. I will then start defining the lines and shape and map out some of the details, like the waterline, the eye creases, the lip shape and more. 
I am also trying to be careful and keep my lines sharp and fine. I always build from lighter to medium tones, gradually to deeper and darker pigments. It's easier to erase mistakes when you use the brown as opposed to a black, but it also serves the purpose of helping me build the gradient. Though it can be hard to not tick in things too much. I'm a really impatient and spontaneous person, so I have to pull myself back a little. Though if you need to build some highlights, <coughs> you can always do so to some extent, as the more sealant you layer, the better the texture becomes over time. That does not mean to spray on a lot of sealant though, you still need to do thin coats and let it dry well between layers, but yeah, you, you won't be able to fully cover over sections, but you can still tweak things up as you go. Here I'm working on the irises. Kira has brown eyes, so I lay the vase of yellow to give the highlight some shine, and I'm using a brown shade to create the gradient. I like adding pops of color in the irises, and with brown, I think I could have added a bit of green too. This could look very good. It's only when I'm happy with the base colors that I have the pupil. I prefer to try to keep it for the end and I will usually use a darker color related to the irises than simply go for black. I feel it's more vibrant that way. Also, if you feel like your blush and contour is getting a little less vibrant, you can still add on some powders. Mr. Superclear tend to do that with pastels over time, so I try to keep an eye on everything. It's also the reason why sometimes I don't hesitate to pack a lot in my initial layers of blushing. Just like drag queens and makeup gurus, I like my brows to have a gradient. I build up so the tails are the darkest part. That big pencil over there is a pastel pencil and it's really pigmented, so this is why you see me slightly blended when I use it. It's becoming my best friend as far as face-ups go. And you see these wall trends of hair? I guess better get used to it, cause they will appear a lot in this video. This is my bed hair! I have short, untamed ginger locks. And starting today, I think I'll be a bit more careful about them showing on camera. <laughs> Whoopsie! I use another pastel pencil, in black this time, to darken the lash line. I also blend it a little bit downwards just to accentuate the shadow in the eyes. Then when I'm satisfied with the overall face up, I use my black pencil though only sparingly.
I'm basically on my last layers here and I'm just building the contrast in more and more until I'm really happy with the end result. I keep the lashes for the very end, drawing them first with a darker color and then going over them with a bit of black. This is as far as I'm going with pencils, and now I will go for paint. Before, I would have used watered down acrylics, but recently I've discovered myself a liking for watercolor paints. I am using Magic Flies paints here, bringing in some details, darkening the lashes and lash line, and of course, I will ultimately also add catch lights. I also just really love to add a bit of textures to the eyebrows and the lips. Okay, no seriously, my own hair is really annoying me. I'm really sorry about that. And here, that's the finished face. I only need to add some shiny varnish to her lips and I'm done. Okay, so for me, Kira's outfit was deceptively hard. I'm not really good at sewing and planning my fabrics and all, so at first I was thinking of using that super stretchy material to do the dress. With extra wrinkles on it to butter everyone, I guess. I apologize for that. But yeah, it did not end well. And... But yeah, you can see the shape here that I made for the dress, so it gives you still an idea of how I created it. I'm not, I'm not really good at creating patterns. But yeah, let's be honest here. I'm only really just good at faking it and winging it. But I'm improving and I can feel it. I believe in it. But yeah, it always surprises me when I get compliments on my sewing. Really, I appreciate it though. It's really heartwarming to know that the effort is paying off. Like, really, thank you. I'm learning with each doll and of course, by watching some other amazing artists and friends who also make doll videos. It's a lot of work to make these videos, you know, and honestly, I think I speak for a huge chunk of the doll community when I say that each view, each like and each comment counts. There's a lot of us and not everyone, I think, is appreciated as much as they deserve and it's just my humble opinion. Talking about opinions, mm, that embroidery, mm, choices, and about one of that. That's when I realized I was getting nowhere near when I had to be. So I made another dress, and this time I used a fabric that had no stretch whatsoever. At least the prototype gave me the right measurement for that one to work flawlessly. As for the mm, vest, Thing she has over it, sorry for my lack of vocabulary, well I made it using some materials from a scarf I thrifted. It's really delicate so I had to fret check all the edges. 
Here I'm just taking my fabric scissors to remove any unsightly areas around the edges, making sure it's nice and clean. I was not sure if I wanted to hem everything at this stage, though I ultimately did it. I will be joining those two halves together, but first I had to make sure they look right and that I knew which side was which, as they are quite similar but not quite the same. This is what I ended up with after sewing the sides and joining them in the middle. It looks rough, but just like I was hoping it to be. It was worn in the forest after all. I am testing the fit to make sure everything falls exactly where I want it to be, which it did, and it felt really good, not gonna lie. Though, <laughs> since I'm concerned it may move a bit too much, I decided to see if I could pin it and sew both garments together. Like this, I have no need to worry about it getting off-center. Though, before I can join them for eternity in sacred matrimony, I wanted to add more of a green tint to the overgarment, so I went in with diluted watercolor paint over it. And once it was done, I took my needle and I went to town. And yes, everything just fell so perfectly in place. It was like a magical moment for me. I added a thin strip of velcro on the back and it felt like the most perfectly well-made garment I ever made. Have I leveled up? I'm not done, but next I need a mannequin doll with a head. I started by cutting those accents Kira has on her shoulders and around her collar with some fake leather. After I sewed them in place, I decided to use paint to bring out the leaf details she has on these. I should have done it before sewing them, but I guess better let than never. A few rhinestones later, and this is the official finished dress. Sorry for the slight continuity error, but we are going to get the cape done now. I'll wing it out of this dark brown fabric, and yes, this is absolutely a thrifted shirt. Okay, so I'm just roughly tracing on a piece of paper the overall shape and size that I want. I will then cut it out and trim it, and of course, make sure it's symmetrical. As for the hood, I looked up shapes of patterns on Google Image, and then I traced a similar shape using the doll's head as a reference size. All that is left now is to pin it on the fabric, cut it, and I'll have what I need. I finished it off camera, but really I mostly just hemmed the sides and attached the hood. Though I did not sew the hood all the way through in case I'd preferred that with Kira's long hair. I also sew some embroidery thread on the edges to be able to tie it up. Back to Kira proper, I took some time to paint her whole body to match her face. I had previously rerouted her hair with platinum blonde acrylic yarn, and then that wrapping is there to keep her hair in check. 
the paint on her lower legs was giving me hell, so I decided I was going to give her wrappings. I think I saw it on some images, but it's also a nice excuse to protect my work a little. She's not wearing shoes after all. I will sew her a pair of panties too, because the, the hip joints are not cooperating despite all my best effort. I did sand the doll first and protect the paint with varnish, but these chippings are often inevitable. Now let's uncover that hair. It's really silky, I used some higher quality yarn on her that I had, and I'm very pleased by how it looks. Those bangs, though, they're fighting me a little bit. I braided some small sections at the front, and as for the rest, I will pass it through my flat iron to remove the creases left over from the wrapping. She has sections in the front, and the rest is staying behind her ears. I will probably add a bit of air gel to keep that in place. Once I am done taming her hair, I will add strands of the same fabric I used to make the overdress to adorn her braids. I'm going to sew them in to make sure they don't move. So, I'm finishing her with a touch of more air gel, but we are actually done with Kira at this stage. Again, I'm sorry I lost the footage for her hair, so uh, yeah, I'm going to start including that part more often in my videos from now on. Also, don't forget, if there's anything you wish to know, or if you have constructive criticism, you can always leave me a comment, because I read and answer most of these. So yeah, <laughs> are you ready to meet Kira? So, how do you like this doll? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Next project will be Alastor from Has Been Hotel, and I cannot wait to show it for you folks. In the meantime though, please, stay safe. <laughs>